Thank you. Hi everyone, so I'm Pierre Marie and this is Raphael. We are both software engineers at AdaCore. And today we'll talk about you we'll talk to you about Lunkit, uh, which is about to bring source code analysis to the masses. So Lunkit is a meta compiler. Okay, what? Um, Lankit, in this project, we created a DSL to make it easy to basically implement uh, front ends. Front ends like compiler front ends. Uh, so it's, Lankit generates libraries which can be used to uh, be the first half of compilers uh, that can also be used in debuggers to parse an expression and to evaluate it for interactive code browsers when you can click on an identifier and that leads you to the definition of this uh, identifier. Um, to write also static analyzers like linters or think of yeah, ceiling tidy or this kind of thing. And also we want to provide, to make it easy to write uh, refactoring tools that for instance you ask on your whole code base, okay, please rename this type definition and all the usage of it. Um, so uh, we created this originally because uh, when in the aid ecosystem we exactly need this kind of library uh, to implement to improve tooling in general. So Lankit was for that, but it's it can be used for other languages as well. So let's have a brief tour on the DSL and how you express things. How we can use Lankit actually. So first of all, um, so for now uh, the Lankit. It's a compiler. You feed it a Python-based DSL. Um, so it's, you're not really writing Python. It's just using the Python syntax to express something else. Uh, one day, we'll, ha we'll probably have uh, a dedicated syntax. So first of all, that should look familiar. The first, when you, when you create a language, the first step is to create a lexer for it. So you can split a string into a sequence of tokens. So the first thing to do is to actually define the list of tokens that your lexer is supposed to create. And then you provide rules that well, start from regex and compile into some automata to uh, actually uh, implement the lexer. So this, is, this should be familiar if you have already written a specification for flex, for instance. It's the same, uh, same mechanism. The next layer is uh, to actually uh, define the list of uh, nodes of three nodes that your parsers are going to create. Um, so here you can see, uh, well, using the Python syntax, you define a class uh, hierarchy uh, where a node can be extract and so on. And each node can have uh, a list of fields. So for instance, if you have a function definition, you have a field that gives the name of the function, the arg list of arguments, the body of it, etc. So you defined the tree. And the next step, you um, you just create you write passing rules so like in Bison if you know it or GAC uh, you write so parsers in a recursive descent fashion uh, to well yeah say okay uh, this rule if you find this token and this token you will produce this node and this in a recursive fashion so and this is built as it is compiled into a parsing that a parsing library that is based on packrats um, so. Lankit will take all the definitions I, I, um, I showed and will compile that. Uh, in particular, it will, uh, so it, will, it will analyze the grammar and uh, from it it will say, okay, we're creating this kind of node with this kind of field and this kind of field, so it will perform type inference. And if you remember here, so I can define fields without providing them type. Well, the grammar will infer type uh, if they are not specified, otherwise you can specify them to be more explicit and uh, link it with the check for consistency. Okay, so now we have well the really the top the bottom layer of your front end. So you have lexing, parsing, and the next step is semantic analysis. So the first thing, so semantic analysis is uh, the part that will answer questions such as okay, uh, what is this identifier referring to? Uh, what is the type of this expression, and so on. So the basis for that uh, is uh, what's called in literature uh, scoping or lexical environments. So here we provide, so uh, in uh, AST nodes, we provide uh, annotation, special annotations that we describe, okay, 
Um, we have a function. OK, let's, this function creates a scope. And uh, everything that will happen inside it will act on this scope, again, in a recursive fashion. And so these this special annotations will enable you to create um, mappings, so kind of dictionaries that map from identifiers to nodes. So this is the first step. And then you will implement semantic analysis using, uh, well, you create, you s add yet another kind of annotation on nodes. Um, so this kind of annotation, so it's methods. We call them properties in Linkit. Uh, the public one will actually implement the uh, semantic analysis API that we want to provide to your users as a library author, author such as here. So we have a var uh, property that will, well, on the variable reference, it will fetch the corresponding variable declar declaration. And you can ha also have private uh, properties that will just be implementation details, and users won't see that. Um, and so these properties, you write them using uh, functional programming language that we created. So this is this, this part here. So uh, here you take, for instance, the current node that it's a variable reference. You take the environment that is associated to it, and you perform a request giving its name. So it's supposed to, is the, ne is the variable uh, definition in the scope, it will return it. So here we'll, we don't see it, but there are types in this. Um, it's a fun functional language that is typed. And we type inference, so uh, link it when it compiles it. Make sure that your expressions uh, <coughs> actually have a uh, are meaningful, and we reject incorrect ones. Okay, so with just this base, we can already uh, do parsing analysis for a great deal of languages, and this is cool. Uh, so all you have to do is to write all the properties you need to answer the request that you want users to uh, to have access to. But there is still a missing piece, which is um, in Ada we needed it, which is uh, ov overload resolution, which is uh, so uh, n type inference. These are problems that are difficult to solve just using a mere functional language because, uh, for, exa for example, here, let's see, we have an example, well, we have several functions that, are, that have uh, names that are equal. But they accept arguments and have written types that are not exactly similar. So for simple cases, such as this one or this one, well, here we have a call, a call to f1, so one of these two, that takes an int, so an integer literal. So it has to be uh, a call to the first one. So here we have a floating point number, so it has to be this one. <coughs> here we call f2 with an integer literal, and there are no F2 function accepting integral literal, so this results to nowhere. And you have complex cases such as this one. So we can see here that we may be able to solve with some fancy algorithm uh, which F2 is called here. You see, it takes a character literal, but OK, both F2 takes a character literal. So here the difficult thing is that um, solving actually res doing um, the, resolu the resolution of names is a problem that requires some non-local non knowledge, uh, resolving which function is called by here by uh, this uh, F1 call. Depends, can depend on something that is quite far. So yeah, it requires non-local knowledge. So uh, just to add something about that, yeah. this problem is ADA specific. In ADA, we have that. So uh, you can overload on the return type of a function. But in, for example, uh, functional programming languages such as OCaml, you have a non-local type inference, and you have the same kinds of problem. So what we are trying to do is have a general solution for these kinds of problem. And this general solution is, well, so if we take the example that uh, I just quoted earlier, so this is a, the complex call that we want to solve, we can collect a set of constraints. So here, so let's, uh, for the purpose of discussion, let's call this, this um, function call C, this func func function call B, and this one A. So uh, we see that A takes a character uh, argument. So here we have this constraint. So A, its first argument, well, its type must be, must be a character. Um, we pass the result of A to as an argument of B. So the written type of A must be the type of the first argument of B. The same applies for the outer call. 
And because we're calling, uh, because A is about calling F2, well, we see that A is one of these two. Yeah, they are also on the same line. One of these two declarations. Same goes for B and C. And so you collect a set of constraints. And then, well, in Linkit, we provide, along with the functional language, um, a satisfactory. Ah, what's the name? A solver. Yeah, a solver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't say satisfiability. Yeah, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. So something that takes a set of constraints and that gives you, hopefully, the unique solution to this problem. And so using all these building, building blocks, well, you're supposed to already express, uh, be able to express semantic analysis for quite a large uh, corpus of languages. And I will leave Raphael speak about what's next. Here, here. Yeah. Let's be quick, we don't have much time. Thank you. OK, so um, Pierre-Marie described to you the mechanism by which you describe your language, so the language specification. And this is what you as a, um, like if you want to write a new language front end, this is what you, you will do. But then you will have users for your library, people who want to, uh, for example, write refactorings for ADA or uh, whatever language, for, mo for the moment we only have ADA, so ADA or ADA, but then we expect to have a, a lot more. <laughs> uh, so we, I'm going to talk about what we generate. Uh, so if it's not obvious yet, because it's a bit complicated, the meta compiler is not a very simple project, uh, this is the pipeline of Lankit. So basically, you will provide your language specification. This is what Pierre-Marie has been talking about so far. And then you feed that to Lankit, and it will generate a library, like something you can call from your code, and that will provide you knowledge. So this library is in Ada, a language that you maybe never heard about. But fear not, because we provide a lot of bindings to other languages, like C, Python, and it's really easy to generate bindings for other languages. And on top of that, the hope of the whole project is to be able, from this language specification, to generate generic tools that I'm going to get into. So, the base library is made in Ada. So, it was an easy, an easy choice for us. Uh, I'm just going to point at the name of the company so that you understand, Ada Core. Uh, basically, we needed a low-level language uh, that can produce fast codes and that doesn't have a memory management um, uh, uh, policy built in uh, that would be complicated for us to handle in IDs. For example, we didn't want to ship a GC along with the libraries because uh, if you need to have results fast, maybe it's not a very good idea, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, we could have chosen another language, but ADA was an obvious choice for us because we have a lot of ADA knowledge, and it's right on target for this use. So uh, since not a lot of people use ADA, we provide bindings to C and to Python. And uh, Python is the de facto scripting language of the ecosystem. So once you generated your library, you can right away use it from Python, launching an interactive shell, and uh, for example, parsing a source code and uh, asking for knowledge about the code. And it's easy to generate bindings to new languages because uh, Lankit has the knowledge from the language specification about everything, the data types, uh, the fields, the functions that are available, so it can very easily generate bindings to other languages. So. Uh, interesting point about Lankit generated libraries is that they are crafted for incremental analysis. Uh, the reason we express, for example, the properties in a functional language, and th uh, the reason everything is declarative, is so that we have freedom in the implementation to do something that takes this semantic and uh, um, uh, generate an incremental analyzer for it. So uh, as little state as possible in the spec so that we can uh, do an incremental analyzer. And for Ada, what this means is that if you change a file, uh, you don't need to uh, recompute every file that depends on it uh, every time like uh, most compiler would do. I know some compilers are more clever than that, but uh, Gnat is not, for example, which is the main compiler for Ada. Uh, so this was very important for integration into IDEs for us. Uh, so, this is an example of something we did with uh, LibEdalang, which is an engine generated with Lankit. And it's a static analyzer for ADA. It's very small. It's, uh, this code is the, uh, the whole static analyzer using the LibEdalang library. What it does is something very simple. It checks for binary operators, like addition, subtraction, 
and checks if syntactically uh, the two operands are the same. So it's a very simple uh, static analysis check. And uh, surprisingly, uh, we run it on our code basis and we found a lot of bugs in uh, our code basis despite extensive testing and other uh, more powerful static analysis uh, run on it. So uh, once you have a static, uh, you, once you have a syntactic analyzer for your language, well, if you have that at, the, at your fingertips, you can do a lot of stuff that is really interesting. And this could be adapted for another Lankit front end. We have a Python parser, for example. Uh, and uh, we have uh, this one running uh, on Python 2, so it's very easy to adapt because uh, the API is uh, exactly the same. So what we also generate automatically from your grammar definition and your tree definition is an unparser. So we have a mean to parse code, but we also have a mean to take a tree and produce a new source file from it, not using any source information. So this is useful because if you remember, Pierre Marie told you that we want to be able to do refactorings with the libraries. So it means that you can modify the tree uh, and then you can uh, call an unparse primitive and it will generate a new source. So this is a very uh, uh, neat abstraction to build uh, refactorings upon. So it uses the grammar and the ST definition. You don't need to write anything else. It will generate the unparser automatically. And so you can use it to do this kind of stuff. So this is an ADA source code, OK? Um, simple hello world pro program, very uh, simple. And then we want to change it, change the string literal to by word, but not using uh, said or whatever, but uh, uh, using the tree directly. And so this is an example program that you can do uh, using the uh, ADA frontend. You will look for uh, the call, and then you will start a diff and uh, rewrite the string literal and put by word instead of hello world. So this is all done at a tree level, not at a source level. And then you apply the diff, and you obtain the new program. So this is very convenient. Um, I don't know how much time I have left. Very little, uh, actually. So um, we ship a number of tools along with the libraries. And the hope uh, from the Lankit project is that uh, the more we go along, the more generic tools we have that you can use. So uh, once you have a language specification, you have generic tools working on it. So we have simple uh, command line tools that you can use. Playground is an interactive shell based on IPython. Uh, Parse is a, just a AST dumper. But we have uh, more interesting stuff, like a prototype for a generic code indenter, for example. So this is for uh, ADA. And what you would do is provide a declarative way of indenting your code for the tree. So you say, for a package declaration, for example, I want the public and the private part to be incremented by block rule, which, which says increment by three columns. And then the engine will do that automatically. And if you have a new language front end, all you need to do is to write this map and you have an indenter for, for your language. Uh, syntax highlighter could be pro, uh, produced along the same way. We have all the information we need to produce a syntax highlighter. And uh, going this way, we could imagine at some point being able to provide a whole server for the language server protocol. So you write your language specification, you write how to do uh, go to definition, auto completion, etc., and it will generate the engine. Uh, that does it, and uh, you can directly plug it into your uh, editor. So for the moment, this is not done at all. It's just a dream. But we have a, uh, we have a prototype uh, for it, uh, which is just a NeoVim plugin, and that already does quite a lot of stuff like indentation, go to definition for uh, ADA, and it does a subset of that for Python 2 because we have a Python front end. So we already have a few prototypes uh, for um, front-ends based on Lankit. So we have ADA, Libadalang, that is the more, most complete. And uh, we have a Python. So for Python, we mostly have the parser. But we have a very simple model of uh, how the scoping works. So in Python, since it's a, it's a dynamic language, you don't really have static scoping. But you can model it so that you can use it in IDEs. So we have that. And we played with other simple languages like JSON or Kconfig uh, to prove that we can actually uh, generate frontends for more languages. And for the moment, that's all. But we hope that raising awareness about the project, people will try to write new frontends, maybe. Uh, and uh, 
tell us that it doesn't work at all and that we need to fix everything. So thank you for listening. You can find the sources for Lankit uh, on GitHub here. And we have a tutorial. So if you want to write a new front end for Lankit, uh, we already have a tutorial that you can find here. So it's still a work in progress. Uh, APIs are moving. And uh, for the moment, except the tutorial, we don't have much more doc. But we will gladly accept any feedback, issues, pull requests, etc. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions? Yes, go ahead. Uh, do you plan, for example, creating a code generation DSL so somebody can maybe use it to code type a simple backend for his language or something like this? So the question was, uh, do you have plans to uh, generate, uh, to uh, be able to generate a simple backend for the languages? I imagine you mean uh, declaratively also? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, so of course you can write a backend using the front end for the moment, you know, but that's not what you're talking about. Uh, we had some ideas about that. It's really not our target uh, at work, but nothing prevents it, uh, nothing prevents it to do it if you, like it's a in, very interesting topic. Uh, so yeah, I have a few ideas of how to do that, uh, but uh, nothing in the works for the moment. <laughs> maybe we'll do that once in our spare time, but maybe. Yeah. Yes? Does your tool preserve comments? Uh, yes, so we have a, a con concept called trivias. And so uh, when you pass the tokens, you can say, this is a token relevant for the tree. And this is a token that you need to store in the tree, but that won't imply, uh, 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 you know, uh, um, with parsing. Yes, thank you very much. With parsing. <laughs> so uh, uh, in that case, it will, st it will be stored in the node. What we don't do for the moment is provide a rewriting API that allows you to insert comments. But we plan to add that at some point, too. Uh, I think there was a question. It was that question, too. OK, cool. <laughs> Yes? Um, what's the expressiveness of your constraints? Um, <laughs> so the question was, what is the expressiveness of your constraints? Um, since I, uh, despite the appearances, I'm not uh, very uh, advanced uh, at constraint solvers, could you precise your question a little bit? For, for instance, you said that you can uh, implement uh, type inference like in an mm -hmm. I think you need to, to be able to, to, to convey the typing environment uh, inside your constraints. I'm not sure that you can. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. So uh, the the um, what the precision was uh, if you need if you want to type ML with it you need to convey the type environment in the constraints. So we have some ways of doing that. I don't know yet if they are going to be sufficient for ML. I'm working on a prototype, and at some point I would like to publish a small example slash paper about that. For the moment, it's, we, we really crafted it for ADA, and then we are going to extend the semantics so that it is useful for more than, more than that. OK, thank you very much.